How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I wanted to share with you some really interesting tests that I did using a 12-volt compressor refrigerator versus an absorption refrigerator versus a residential refrigerator. And the results really surprised me. Before I did this test, I wasn't even thinking about swapping out our absorption refrigerator, but now I am really playing around with the idea of swapping it out for a 12-volt compressor refrigerator. Now, this is a lot different than the absorption refrigerator that we're used to in an RV that can run off of 120 AC, 12 volt, and propane. In these newer 12 volt compressor models, uh, it has a compressor in there, so it's no longer working off the absorption system on the back of the refrigerator. On these newer units, it's a small 12 volt compressor system on the back of this, so you don't need an inverter to be able to run this type of a refrigerator. Now, before we get into the pros and cons of this type, I wanna give you the numbers of how much power it takes to run each of these main three type of refrigerators. Now, this isn't a perfect test because I couldn't get all three exactly in the same condition and the same size and the exact same setting, but I think these numbers are gonna be extremely telling. So uh, the residential refrigerator in a 24 hour period is gonna use 1,759 watt hours. Now that's just the base of what it's going to use on the AC side of things. So that doesn't take into account uh, the loss that you're gonna have running an inverter if you're out there boondocking. Now, if we're running this absorption fridge on AC power, which we wouldn't do boondocking, we'd switch it over to propane, it's going to use 6,756 watt hours in a 24 hour day. That is a huge amount of increase in power that is needed to run this fridge when we're on AC power. I mentioned the power consumption of the absorption fridge on AC power because that's how we use it going down the road. Our inverter is powering the fridge. We turn off the propane and it's powering it through the AC. So it uses a considerable amount of power. So not that we're really using it that way for boondocking, but it does come into play because of how much power it uses while we're driving down the road. So the residential refrigerator, 1,759, this absorption refrigerator at 6,756, and then this 12 volt compressor refrigerator comes in at 925 watt hours per day. So you can see that huge gap between the residential and this 12 volt compressor refrigerator to the absorption refrigerator. It takes a lot of energy in order to cool these absorption refrigerators and they don't get quite down to the same temperature. But if we're gonna switch this absorption refrigerator over to boondocking, so we're gonna be running it off of propane, it still needs some 12 volt in order for it to operate. So I measured that too. So if we're using propane and we're using a little bit of 12 volt to make it work, in a 24 hour period, we're going to use 246 watt hours for that day. So it still is consuming a certain amount of 12 volt in that boondocking scenario. It doesn't just go to a big goose egg for what we need for power to run the fridge. But as far as our electric demand, that would be the lowest possible that we could have for boondocking. So boondocking, that's still gonna be your lowest electrical consumption, but you're gonna be using propane. Now, if I wanted to offset solar-wise the amount for this 12-volt compressor refrigerator, I would wanna go around 150 watts, probably 200 watts. So our portable panels are probably what would offset this fridge if we were to switch to it. Those things were so cheap, so easy, so light. It's easy to take those along to offset a fridge like this. Now that brings us to the temperature difference. So I have both of these fridges set so that uh, they're gonna be below that 40 degree mark. So around 34 degrees inside the fridge area. Uh, so both of these are very easy to be able to match that. This one I have set at six and it can go all the way up to nine for its degrees of cooling, but that sets the fridge at a really nice temperature. And I don't have the 12 volt compressor fridge on max. I have it one down from there and it puts the fridge at a really comfortable temperature around 34 degrees in there. But the freezer in this one, we're usually averaging around eight degrees Fahrenheit, usually between 10 and six, depending on how often that door is getting open. And this one is sitting at that lower negative one degrees Fahrenheit, usually bouncing between negative six and close to zero. So uh, it puts it in that range depending on how often it's getting used. Now that brings us to how quickly these get down to temperature and the 12 volt absorption refrigerator took two and a half hours to get fully down to temperature 
And the absorption refrigerator is usually going to take about eight hours. Usually you want to plug that in or turn it on the day before so it can get down to temperature. It takes much longer to work. And the 12 volt compressor refrigerator, I would trust more in the summertime. I don't fully have a test on that because it's only spring right now. Uh, but the absorption refrigerator, when there's sun on that side and you're in the middle of summer, it's going to have a hard time cooling the inside of that because it's all based off of heat. And if it's too hot outside, it can't have the heat and then the cooling where it needs to in order to absorb the heat out of the fridge and make it cold inside. Because the absorption refrigerators need to be vented to the outside, that's why you have a lower vent and an upper vent and you need that air exchange in there. With this 12 volt compressor refrigerator, you can block those vents up because this one doesn't need to be vented to the outside. So you could try and make your RV a little bit more efficient by not having those vents on your RV. So this is what it boils down to between looking at the 12 volt compressor refrigerator and the absorption refrigerator. I had no plan of swapping out our absorption refrigerator because it's working fine and refrigerators are really expensive to swap out. So this is a 12 cubic foot refrigerator and this one's a 10.7. You can see that this one looks substantially smaller than what the, the space that the absorption refrigerator takes up. So I'm still not sure if I'd want to swap out the fridge because this one requires less power while we're out boondocking, uh, but this one has a lot of other advantages that go along with it. The only reason we got this fridge is because we were filling up propane at an RV dealership and I saw this thing sitting out in the, the bay and I asked if I could film it because I wanted to do a video on 12 volt refrigerators and apparently it was broken. So they were like, sure, you could have it. So I grabbed it fixed it. It just needed a compressor board and it's been working fantastic. So now that the size comparison between the two of these is so similar, now I'm debating whether I want to switch to this or not. I do have other plans for it if I don't use it in here, but it is really tempting all the advantages with this refrigerator. On a side note, I don't understand RV repair facilities. For them, in their mind, it was easier just to pull this out and put a new one in when really all it needed was a board to be replaced. And it took me a couple of hours to figure that out, ordered the part, put it in, and it's been working flawless. But I hope this video gives you the, the information that you would need to make an informed decision. You can see what the residential refrigerator pulls. If you're out there boondocking, it's gonna be a little bit more depending on what inverter you have and the inefficiencies with the inverter and the loss in that conversion. Uh, you can see that you would have no conversion with the 12 volt power supply. It's not gonna be pulling off your inverter just from your battery bank. So that 925 watt hours that it's gonna be pulling in a day is going to be very accurate as an average. And if you're looking for the lowest consumption for electrical when out boondocking, then absorption might be what you, you would want. Now these fridges are really expensive, so just swapping it out when you didn't need to and you have a working refrigerator seems like a long shot. But if you have a refrigerator go down, uh, you might be looking at what are your options out there. And I hope this gives you the information in order to make the decision on which direction you would like to go. But I think that's gonna do it for today. If you guys like this video and it helped you out, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.